Okay, welcome to my talk about uh, fitting growth rates. Uh, it was together, uh, done together with uh, two colleagues uh, from our university. Um, the motivation is that uh, growth rate is very uh, important uh, indicator of fitness for populations in biology and it's very widely applicable to animals, plants, bacteria, and it can be used to test substances on one side or to create mechanistic models for uh, organisms. Um, uh, we, uh, growth rate is um, influenced by many factors, for example, resources, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, by toxic substances uh, like pollutants, uh, which are uh, widely under discussion, pharmaceuticals, or especially antibiotics, what I am currently working with, or also by uh, physical environments. And we have, in general, two cases. Growth rate depends on a resource in an increasing way, and uh, or in, with, um, uh, is dependent on a stressor, and this, this is then the second step. So first, estimate the growth rate, then find the so-called functional response. So the um, populations can be observed in different ways. You can go out in the field and count the animals in the forest, or uh, with smaller organisms, use uh, a micro well plate and an automatic plate reader, and you get in a few hours uh, 380, uh, a little bit less because of the uh, controls, of course, of the Planck's uh, uh, growth curves. So modern biology produces a large amount of data, but uh, data analysis turned to be out uh, as a bottleneck. And my problem, my personal problem working in a, a group with biologists was that uh, the proprietary software was limited. So it's easy to fit a single growth rate, but what to do if you want to do, uh, what to fit hundreds? Or you want to uh, use another method, then you have to export it, convert the data format in something different, import it again. And this was a, a situation uh, that uh, drive, drove me into a really problem. So R can do it, of course. Ah, stop, it was the wrong. R can do it, but uh, not all biologists want to spend their lives as programmers, as was said in the ecology mailing list. And uh, to uh, find a way in this Babylonian diversity of parametric models or to compare different approaches and also this automatization uh, uh, created lots of questions and, uh, uh, and uh, supervision. And this was a frequently asked question for me, so I decided to uh, deal a little bit more with this. And first I found out that there are already um, several packages available on CRAN. But then I contacted the author to put in something else and he didn't uh, respond because the project was at the end and someone else took over who doesn't know the fundamentals. Then I uh, got in contact with the senior author and said, yes, it's good if you take our ideas and create something new. So uh, what is in uh, this package uh, is a selection of different approaches in a, with a uh, unique user interface. This first approach, uh, growth rates made easy, that's from the, not from the R world, and it's, I must say, from a statistical viewpoint, ridiculous, but widely used and very uh, popular, you will see it. Or a smoothing spline approach, that's the package where I took ideas from, or, of course, parametric models. And my idea was to create a package that can be extended, where other uh, models can be plugged in, so I selected an object-oriented uh, way. I did considered also R6, uh, but then uh, um, used S3, S4, uh, because it is the most natural way in R, uh, especially for beginners, and this is my target group to work with a package. So uh, I stop. that's always the biggest green, is not the laser pointer. Uh, the package has a formula interface, uh, of course, convenience functions to extract the results in tabular form, and visualization. Uh, Built-in is only a small set of models because it's extensible. I didn't like to put everything in what is uh, available, and these functions can be given in closed form, 
but also as a system of ordinary differential equations, which are then solved by a, the package D is solved where I'm a uh, maintainer. Um, and so it allows the numerical integration of models and also the option to use compiled code to put in a, a differential equation model to compile it to make it fast and of course also multi-core. So the first point was already the data structure. I think it's self-evident for all users to make it like this as a data frame uh, with columns, but this is not self-evident in the biology scene. They have often cross tables and this is one of the biggest problems that I had in the beginning. So that's why it's extremely flexible and can be used for different setups of factors. Um, here, uh, an overview about the methods that are built in. This is the growth rates made easy approach I will uh, ex uh, explain later. Then a spline approach uh, and different types of uh, uh, parametric fits. Here the standard logistic, here a, a, a modified logistic with a, with a lag period, and here a user-defined method which can handle the decrease uh, in the saturation phase. So a few words about this uh, growth rates made easy method just because that you see how biologists often still work and by the way, it's a robust way uh, to get uh, first estimates. So log transform the data, okay, that's fine. Then select five points, every five points sets and fit a linear regression. Then take the steepest one, uh, make a discount of 95% on the slope, integrate the other points, and this is the maximum growth rate. So this is the algorithm that is uh, proposed here. And my question was first, why five points? Why 95%? And is it possible to show users what this uh, means in practice? So this is now a small shiny app uh, that is collected here. And for my example, you will see if I decrease to four points, then it's better from a visual way. So that's that what a human would do. Yeah? But of course, uh, we are here at the uh, R and statistics conference, so let's go to the next method. Um, uh, or I'll show how it, how it works. So this is how it can be done in practice. Um, we have here uh, a function that I introduced, multi-split, that's just an, an extension of the ordinary split method that can work with formula. Uh, so I split uh, my uh, data set into different data frames, so I get a, a list of data frames, then I can access them uh, with the index or with the name, uh, and fit one curve, uh, plot it, and see the result. Uh, and then there are some other functions to uh, extract results, for example. Another method uh, is uh, smoothing splines. Uh, the good thing is that you get immediately the first derivative uh, uh, as the maximum growth rate. The disadvantage is that it's difficult to get um, the, the maximum and also that you have to think about the degree of smoothing because the data, especially in this uh, multi vowel experiments are autocorrelated, uh, the cross-validation does not work, so um, uh, it can also be set manually, but if you have an idea how to make this better, it's highly welcome. <laughs> so parametric models, as said, can be given in, in closed form uh, or as a differential equation or uh, user-defined. There are a few already in. Exponential logistic and several others, several others with, um, with lag phase. Uh, the package FME is used for constraint nonlinear optimization. That's quite basic uh, uh, um, uh, uh, least squares. Um, and um, differential equations can be given. Uh, two are built in, a two step growth model with two, two equations and the generalized logistic. And it's possible to compile, use compiled code thanks to the package CODE of. Daniel Kaszek. 
Um, here an example how this works in practice, uh, an antibiotic resistance um, uh, data set. And we see here in the linear case it fits very well at the first look, but if you look a little bit more close, then we see that the lag phase is not found, and here also uh, the uh, saturation is not well uh, presented. I have another shiny demo uh, online where you can compare the different parametric models that are built in. That's a generic shiny thing, so I can just put, plug in a new model and then the, the um, interface will adapt. I skip this because of time constraints. Yeah, um, here an example for a user-defined model. What I do here is I make the carrying capacity or uh, um, a function of time. This is uh, here, instead of k, I put in k plus dk uh, plus uh, times time. So we have an additional slope um, in the uh, model. And this is then easily plugged in uh, and can uh, fit it like, like a standard model. There's a little bit more uh, technique to, to make this even more general, but this is here uh, left out. And what you see that it fits now much better compared to the other one. Yes, then of course we come to the point where we try to fit uh, a total series of experiments. Um, here in this case, uh, we have functions all do something for, for example, all growth models or all easy linear. Um, uh, the same also with the formula interface and it can uh, run on uh, multi-core. Um, and then we get with results uh, a nice table of all the results, thank you. Um, yes, these are then uh, the fits from this antibiotic experiment. And I come to the next point to fit uh, with NLS, in this case, uh, a functional response curve to it. Uh, here, this is a tetracycline, um, uh, an antibiotic, and here, uh, log transformed, otherwise it would look just exponential. And this is then the growth rate. Uh, uh, also, a nice experience, this propagate package from Spies, which can uh, estimate uh, um, um, the confidence intervals for uh, NLS fits, what NLS, uh, predict NLS cannot do. So it's, it's there since the beginning of R that it's not yet implemented. <laughs> but it's not so easy, of course. So summary, package growth rates has uh, three methods with a unique inf interface, a plain data structure of uh, uh, functions for single and multiple fits. Uh, it's uh, with uh, user friendliness in another sense than the mouse clicking software uh, designed. And uh, it can support numerically solved uh, UDE models. And my question is, have I still a minute time? Uh, it's used for constructing building blocks for more complex statistical models. And the question is, will you ask what the more complex statistical models are? We are here in a, uh, in a session, statistical modeling. I thought I will end in bioinformatics, but... So this was very simple, basic standard, just but compiled together yeah, to make it user-friendly. So what can be tried now with such a with such a data set. Yes, well, one minute. Okay, uh, I got uh, the hint that I should end now. You can, you can ask for this if you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, but why not a nonlinear mixed model? Yeah? Uh, uh, why? Because you first have to construct your model. You should know which functions to use. Uh, and this is not so easy if you do it in one step. Uh, mixed modeling is a sometimes all or nothing uh, approach. And here you can 
uh, especially use R's with a slow, a small, a lowercase r learn how to work with these models. And then you can sit down and make a non-linear mixed model. Uh, this is uh, package LME4. Again, the, the user-defined model with a time-dependent uh, carrying capacity. A, a small trick here uh, for an offset. Uh, I fitted, of course, several models. And then with NLMR, uh, and that's the result. Works nicely. Takes an afternoon. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes, would, would also be a very good idea, a Bayesian model I, I have indeed in my, in my mind, um, especially as we have a, um, a, an MCMC algorithm in the, in the FME package. Uh, yes, with some time, uh, would be a good idea. The minimum time span. Yeah, but I guess it can be in your experience. Uh, it's, it's very dif different, yeah. In, in, in this case, with bacteria, it's, it's hours, yeah. It's 24 hours also. Um, and if you want to observe elephants, it's, uh, of course, much, much, much longer. Uh, but what is important is how many data points are, are needed. And the, the, I would say experience says uh, the more, the better. And if you have less than seven, uh, it doesn't much make much sense to start. <laughs> ah, okay. You want to use it in in, for, in marketing, okay? Ah, but. Uh, if you want to, to observe just one growth period, yeah? if you measure frequently, if this is possible, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a short period, for example, yes, if if if. Yes, of course. Um, uh, the, the, um, this can be done with with R anyway. Yeah. The the focus here is, um, uh, I think, if you have to fit lots of such curves uh, and. Also, if you want to use a differential equation model. Huh? And so it's, in principle, uh, not so limited. And I consider also in the future to fit the function response curves with this. Huh? The, the basic approach is the same. The only problem I have that I named the independent variable time. Huh? This will change soon. 